Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to continue where we left off again, and uh, having set up our stage, we're going to start messing around with some of the viewports and getting our first actor added to a stage and being able to see how different uh, viewports uh, do their best to maintain your virtual width and virtual height aspect ratio. Um, it's going to be a little hard to demonstrate some of them uh, just based on the way they work. However, we will be able to see a lot of the inner workings that they do to maintain the aspect ratio you're trying to hold on certain devices such as desktop or Android phones. Um, so I'm going to uh, be talking mostly about this area, um, that parameter I said I'd leave blank until we start working on it, but I'd say we should first get an actor that we can add to our stage setup. So what we're going to do is uh, set up a simple splash image, um, and that's going to be a image object, and we're just going to call that splash image. And you're going to want to be careful here because it's the same name. You're going to want to go to the com gdx scenes scene two d ui image object. You don't want the Java image type, so be wary of that import. Um, and when you create the splash image, you're going to give it a texture. So we're going to get texture, and this is going to be splash text equals new texture. Import that real quick, and that's gdx.files.internal. And I put this under Android assets image splash, and I'm sure you've seen this go image before. I tend to use it in my games and whatnot. Um, so I'm just going to call that image splash.png. OK, now that I have that, I can go down and do splash image equals new image, and then pass it that texture splash text. OK, perfect. So uh, this image object is actually an actor. Um, it is in the UI package, uh, so do Remember that it's more of a UI widget than it is an actual actor object, uh, but you can influence it with all the same kind of stuff because it does have all those actor properties. Um, and after we've created it, we uh, can set the X and Y of it real quick by doing set position. And we're just going to do uh, stage dot get width divided by 2 minus 16. It's a 30, I believe it's a 32 by 32 image. Uh, we'll probably find out. Um, yeah, it should be. Uh, so stage dot get height divided by two minus sixteen. So that'll put it in the very center because when you're working with the stage, the camera is oriented to be, uh, or actually that's how I set it. Um, when I do camera dot set to ortho false, the the y is on the bottom. If it was set to true, the y would be on the top, and positive would be down. Um, but I'm working with a regular Cartesian coordinate system here, so. Um, doing this should center it just fine. So uh, after we've initialized it and everything, we can add it to our stage. So you just do stage.add actor, and we want to add our splash image. Good, and that's really all we have to do. Um, do you know this, because this is the create method, uh, should this image be influenced in any way and the screen is changed and then changed back to this one, um, it'll maintain however it was left. So the show method is where you kind of want to reset things if you're keeping this screen in memory uh, without disposing of anything and you're not resetting stuff. Uh, do note you want to make all your pre-modifications of objects to any kind of initial positions in the show method once the screen is set. Um, so. We've added our first splash image. That's all good and uh, nice, but we don't really have um, a viewport set up. So what we're going to want to do is uh, start adding the first parameter. And I'm going to use the fit viewport just to start. And we're going to use our virtual width and our virtual height. And we're also going to pass it our application's camera that we have. Um, right here, the orthographic camera, because that's the kind of camera we want to work with. And so now the fit viewport will work with this camera as its primary camera 
for the viewport controller, and it will scale it uh, by giving it this virtual width and virtual height, and it will maintain that aspect ratio to the best of its ability. So uh, to do that, we also need to add in the resize method. Um, we get our stage dot get viewport dot update, and we want to pass it the width, height, and we also want to say uh, false for now. Uh, this Boolean value, um, as is noted in a lot of the documentation and everything, is for centering your camera. So the reason that might be useful is for HUD cameras or anything. So if you have a, two different stages, which you will most likely be working with multiple stages in certain classes, um, one for the HUD and one for uh, all the actors and environment and actual gameplay stuff. Um, so just be wary of that. That can be pretty useful. Uh, it'll be your friend with H uh, HUD stuff. So heads up display um, drawing. Uh, so with that, I believe um, because we added the actor already, we should be able to see the image on screen centered and everything, and we should be good to go. So yep, there we go. Uh, there's our image like we had before. And because we passed our viewport that aspect ratio of 480 by 420, it's going to try and maintain it. And uh, you'll notice how when I stretch this out and kind of put it up, it's maintaining these like, it'll shrink the space that it's working with. So you, if you can follow my mouse here, it's kind of like boxing this area. It will maintain the diagonal ratio um, and keep it centered too. That's another important thing. So you notice as I go this way, it doesn't really change until it gets smaller than four, I believe 480. Um, and then it'll start managing how tall it is to maintain that diagonal aspect ratio again. Um, and as I go right, it'll grow until it reaches that 420 and then it will just uh, stay the same because it's greater than the 480. So uh, you can just kind of mess around with resizing to see how it influences the way things are being drawn and uh, moved around and whatnot. Um, so that's the fit viewport. So let's go to another one. Uh, this one is the stretch viewport. And you can import it there. And you, it, it takes in the same parameters. It still maintains a virtual width and a virtual height. And so we'll run it one more time. And you'll notice there's some different things going on when we use this. So the stretch viewport will actually stretch your game out. Uh, it'll make things bigger. And as you can see, it just grows with it. It doesn't really keep that letterbox kind of thing. As I shrink it, it'll shrink the image. And so this could be a good one in some cases if uh, you actually keep control of your virtual width and virtual height, but don't allow, allow uh, absolute uh, scaling, uh, like resizing of the ap application window. Um, and then there is the, I believe it's called the fill viewport. Oops, get rid of that. Okay. Well, it takes the same parameters again, maintaining a virtual width, virtual height, etc. cetera. Um, we'll go back in here real quick. And so this one is going to act a little bit different. It's, uh, it's going to try and fill the screen width, uh, but not necessarily the height, as you see there. It just kind of maintains the, the width ratio, but doesn't get any smaller. Um, it kind of acts pretty differently. So as you can already tell, uh, there's a lot of viewports, uh, scaling viewports that you can work with. Um, but I think the one that I want to work with personally is going to be the fit viewport. Um, uh, ooh, well, actually, you know what? I'm going to make that the stretch viewport just because I, I, I think that'd be the best one. Um, then we don't have to deal with anything going out of bounds or having black bars here or anything. We're just work, working with something that will stretch on demand. Because um, we are just going to be working with uh, this box 480 by 420 window for this demonstration of scene 2D stuff. Um, so with that, uh, we got our first image set up. We talked about a few of the different kind of viewports you can get established. Um, and then also setting the resize method for your viewport so it can update on demand, understanding what this false means. And uh, I think that's all we're going to touch base on today. So 
I hope you enjoyed the video so far. I think next time we're going to start looking at uh, getting more interactivity with our splash screen and setting up a few actions for this actor and just observing uh, the action class uh, and seeing how you can set alpha values, fade in, fade out, and interpolation values and whatnot, all by calling very, very simple chained action methods. So hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks again. Uh, like, comment, subscribe as usual, and see you next time.